race distance a little over 35 miles, the lights go green, the newly resurfaced track just two years ago here will offer a great deal of grip, a great deal of action, and it's number 32, Bayliss, diving into riches at the first turn. Chris Walker has gone with him. It looks like number four, John Reynolds, as they come up to Sear Corner, the back end of Bayliss's bike. Remember, it's cool here. The tyres will take at least a lap to get warm, to get grippy, and already a huge crash coming out of Sear. That was a very big one. It looked to me as though two bikes went down. We're with Sean Emmett moving alongside the number eight Suzuki of James Hayden. The fastest part of the circuit coming down towards the S's, but the Suzuki rider is brave. There is Chris Walker, race leader though Bayliss it is. Number two Walker up into second. Pops a wheelie on the Kawasaki as they go down into the bomb hole. The next right-hander will be the very, very fast, sweeping right-hander, 120 miles an hour of Coram Kerr. Reynolds number four in second. It's Bayliss's teammate Hodgson on the back end of Reynolds, but race leader and championship leader Troy Bayliss as through at the chicane goes Hodgson past Reynolds, Steve. Yeah, that was a good move from Hodgson there, but that's the accident we saw, and that's Dave Wood. He's crashed there, and we get a replay of this. It's Davey Wood going in. You see the bike out of control, and he's going in there. Flings him into the air, and he incredibly just hits the top there of Shane Byrne on the Harris Suzuki, and they both go down. That was a big accident. Yellow flags waving there as the riders come through onto that main straight. So it's 32, Bayliss. He's converted that pole position there into the lead. Walker riding the wheels off the Kawasaki. It seems that the Kawasaki doesn't have the speed of the Ducatis here on this really, really fast circuit. But there they go, through the bomb hole. Not much runoff area. It's not a place you want to fall off. Up into third gear to Coram Curve. Walker, number two there, shadowing Bayliss as they come round Coram Curve in towards one of the slower corners, right the way down into Russell's, down into first gear, as Bayliss brakes really hard, chucks it in there. First gear accelerating out of that corner. We're on board here now with Sean Emmett, and that's McKenzie going through on the Yamaha. McKenzie dives through on the inside there and accelerates up over the start and finish straight. McKenzie, of course, the lap record holder here. The reigning champion McKenzie is getting quicker all the time on the Yamaha, but the Ducatis here are over six miles an hour faster than number two Chris Walker's Kawasaki down the back straight. So that is why Chris Walker on the green bike is having to ride oh so hard. He's doing a great job. He's in second place between the two orange GSE Ducatis. Walker number two, Hodgson, the superior speed of the Italian booming V-twin going past as up into second place goes first race winner at Brands Hatch and after race one of course the championship leader Neil Hodgson who has come back to the UK after some seasons in World Superbike and Grand Prix and he's had something of a rude awakening but the 25 year old from Burnley now trailing his teammate right in the wheel tracks a pole position man and race leader number 32 Troy Bayliss we are riding with Sean Emmett as past goes privateer championship leader Paul Young on the Yamaha R7 that is a very quick motorcycle. Emmett, it's fair to say, the number seven Ducati rider, not in your picture now, but the man who is a mobile camera for us, crashed very heavily on Friday in practice, and he's nursing a lot of bruises. His teammate, though, number four, John Reynolds. Not so for Reynolds. He is a winner with great potential here, John Reynolds, and this is the year he could do it again. Back with the privateers. Number 24, the privateer there, going very well indeed. That's Paul Jones from Swansea. So the Welshman's had a long run up here to Snetterton. The privateer championship alive and well, but 96, Paul Young on the Yamaha, has seemingly dominated so far. But Steve, when we get into the more technical circuits later in the year, it could be a different story for everyone. Yes, I think it certainly could, but the battle at the front really is between those two Ducatis. And there's Hodgson, he missed the gear. Neil Hodgson's missed the gear. That's allowed Reynolds to go through. Number four, Ducati and Reynolds goes through into second place and it really does seem to be a Ducati circuit it's very very fast they're reaching speeds of over 170 miles an hour down that back straight it's not that the Ducati has any more power than the inline four cylinders and that one of Chris Walker's that we can see in fourth place it's just that they deliver the power much easier the riders are able to get on the power a bit earlier and it makes a difference and we see a back marker there moving out the way as they all go charging past down the straight slipstream vitally important there and Reynolds they're really getting tucked in and he's now weighing up Bayliss as they go into towards the S's now, down through the gears, right the way down into second gear as they flick it right, coming out of here, gingerly turning the power on as they go up towards the bomb hole in the dip here now, and Reynolds is looking threatening. 
The dominance of the Ducatis, of course, is evident in World Superbike as well and is the source of some concern for the organisers that the Ducatis do appear and, of course, they're allowed to be 1,000cc, whereas the Japanese four-cylinder bikes are restricted to 750 race leader. Reynolds dives through and he now leads. John Reynolds has done what he wanted to do and that's get the chasers behind him. He's now got a clear track ahead of him, but look at Troy Bayliss on the inside. No. Reynolds held off on the brakes, oh, enjoys the luxury of taking off a rip-off from his visor mid-turn. Now, that's not easy because that big Ducati takes a bit of holding on to halfway around the bend, never mind removing your left hand from the handlebar to tear off. But that cost me run a little bit wide, just a bit unsettled, Steve. Yeah, that's confidence for you. You take the lead and then take one hand off to take your visor off, and there you see Bayliss having a look, and he does it. He gets the slipstream down the inside. Reynolds did run wide as they came onto the straight, and that corner is so important. You must get on the power early. Reynolds lost a little bit of time when he ran out there onto the old circuit, and that allowed Bayliss to go through. Now it's Hodgson's turn. You can see the Ducati bucking and weaving as they go down towards the bomb hole there. The big dip, the bomb hole, it used to be a World War II airfield here at Snetterton, but it's been converted into a very, very fast racetrack now. So let's see, can Bayliss keep that lead? Now we're on board with James Hayden, and that's our camera looking back at his teammate, number 33, Marty Craghill, the Australian. He's getting faster and faster every race meeting. There shouldn't be much in these performance of these bikes. You can see the big air intakes on that Suzuki as it gallops up the air, charging down the straight. Well, the Suzuki's are quick, but it's a source of some concern for Paul Denning, the Suzuki team boss, that they are a bit off the pace, and we would have expected the fuel-injected Suzuki's to be running with this Ducati trio at the front. It's Bayliss leading, number four, Reynolds in second, number 25, Hodgson in third, Chris Walker, championship runner-up coming here to Snetterton. Is he going to go away from Snetterton? Further down the order, look at these Ducatis, one, two, three, and it's Reynolds holding off the challenge from Hodgson. No, not quite. It's a GSE 1 2 again into the S's, the orange bikes, and it's the Revy Racing Ducati of John Reynolds, number four, pursuing hard in third. But there's a lot of experience under the head of John Reynolds. All the way through last season, he was dogged by injury. He is now fully fit. He has World Superbike machinery. Hayden, looking back at Marty Craghill. As Steve said, nothing between the performance of these bikes and Craghill now shaking off those injuries. He is getting faster and faster. And I'm looking forward to the Australian Superbike champion. When we get later in the season, he'll be fully fit. And I believe, Steve, he has all the capabilities of mixing it at the front because he beat Bayliss in previous outings in Australia. Troy Bayliss is well aware and we look at Hodgson now he dives up the inside into Sears corner so now Hodgson takes the lead as they come onto the straight but you're absolutely right Barry. Troy Bayliss is well aware of the potential of Craig Hill. He's been faster than him in Australia. Once he gets fit, once they get the Suzuki sorted, he's going to be the man to keep our eyes on. But now it is Hodgson as they come down in. And there you see number four, Reynolds goes through into second place. So Bayliss has gone from first to third in half a lap as they come through the S's there down towards the bomb hole. Look at Reynolds and a brave move by Hodgson, the new race leader. So, winner of the first round of Brands Hatch leads here at Snetterton. He certainly has the tools to do the job in that Ducati. It is blisteringly fast, but similarly mounted, John Reynolds, number four, knows his bike is every bit a match for the bikes either side of him, and he's going to go for it. Another wheelie as he hooks up a gear, coming out of Russell's onto the straight, past the pit wall, where the mechanics and the signalers are putting out the running order. John, you're in second place. Number seven, Sean Emmett, being passed now by number 96, privateer Paul Young on the Yamaha, who is having a whale of a time in this British Championship. He's making a habit of putting the factory boys behind him, just as he's done in Australia, but that demonstrates just how fast Emmett's Ducati is. Now, Emmett is injured. He's not comfortable on the turns. He's hurting all over. He's had a physiotherapist push and pull him about all the way through Friday night to get him supple, to get him mobile. But when you're carrying bruises like that, Steve, it's going to hurt. It is going to hurt, and he's suffering. He's lost a little confidence with the front end of that bike. He's got to build it back up. But meanwhile, now, number four, John Reynolds is passing. Number 30 there, it's Lee Humphreys, one of the back markers. He's got his way through there. Traffic can be a big problem, and it can slow you down considerably. But Reynolds has got through. But there, Hodgson hasn't because he's been passed. Number 32, Bayliss has got through into second spot. That has hurt Neil Hodgson in the traffic there. He hasn't fought his way really quickly through there.
Bayless in second place, but it's Reynolds, number four, who got the better of all those tailenders, and that's a crucial point in the race when you can take advantage of the traffic. John Reynolds has done a superb job. Hayden, number eight, on the Suzuki. Craggill has now got ahead of Hayden, and Hayden is under some pressure from Neil McKenzie, who's getting faster all the time on the Yamaha. Let's see how it compares for straight top speed with the Suzuki, and it's quick! And no, Neil McKenzie just holding off a little bit on the brakes there because Hayden is not unknown to throw it away occasionally when he's desperate. He had two big crashes at the World Superbike round at Donington a week previously, and he is a little bit second-hand. But through goes McKenzie into seventh place. Now, the best result for the Scott was Alton Park fifth, and can he improve on that? I don't know, because Marty Craggle, number 33, is in sixth. McKenzie's in the hunt, but John Reynolds now making this race his own. He definitely got the better of the tail-enders, and he's looking oh so confident as he heads for the checkered flag. Along with him, John Reynolds gets a maiden win in the 1999 British Superbike Championship. And it's been a little out coming, but no one is more pleased than JR. There's confirmation of that victory for Reynolds. Bayliss in second place, Hodgson Walker for Rostrum so far, but he didn't manage a fifth here at Snetterton. Mackenzie and Hayden both got the better of Marty Craig. Round eight was dominated by the GSE Ducatis of Troy Bayliss and Neil Hodgson, who fought hard together until Hodgson went wide, allowing Reynolds to close the gap. GSE's decision to opt out of the World Superbike round at Donington Park in order to test at Snetterton had obviously paid dividends, and Bayliss took his fourth win of the year. Bayliss extended his lead to 24 points over Walker and was looking very strong. Meanwhile, Reynolds' look seemed to have changed and was now four points behind Hodgson in fourth place.